All right, hope everybody out there is having a good Monday. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. bringing you this video from the at-home setup as I get ready to cover Monday Night Football. A little bit of a late start for me going into the Chat Sports offices, but Kyle Shanahan confirming the news that we talked about after our watch party yesterday that Talano Hufanga did suffer a clean ACL tear in his right knee, and he is out for the remainder of the season. He suffered that play non-contact injury in the Niners 27-14 win over the Buccaneers yesterday. San Francisco now going to be without an all-pro player who steps up. That's all coming your way on today's show. First though, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Yesterday during that Buccaneers watch party, the best place to experience the game outside of being at the actual game. 100,000 views Gave away an autographed Debo Samuel jersey. Had a raffle item as well going to Black Mask, one of our loyal subscribers. So make sure you subscribe to join us for all of our watch parties. Seahawks week, Seahawks watch party coming up on Thanksgiving primetime. And of course, we'll continue to give you all of the latest Niners analysis. So Hufonga out for the year. Let's talk about it. What does it mean? It's unfortunate for him. Based off of the timing, San Francisco 49ers hopeful and they believe that Talano Hufonga will be fully recovered from his torn right ACL in time for the 2024 regular season. That's what Kyle Shanahan said this morning. And unfortunate for a player who has had so much success in his Niners career, fifth-round pick out of USC, didn't blow anybody away with measurables or freak athleticism at the NFL Combine, but when San Francisco drafted him, I applauded the move getting a quality player who's very smart and intelligent in the fifth round, great value, and he was able to give this team significant snaps, special teams, and defense from the jump, year one, and then in year two last year, was able to become an all-pro player. What he lacks in elite athleticism, he makes up for it by being a high IQ, instinctual football player who you can use in a variety of ways, really at all three levels of the field. At the line of scrimmage as a blitzer, you can use him in the slot, hybrid linebacker, safety as well. So San Francisco's really going to miss his versatility. And I don't just say this because of the Polynesian connection between him and Troy Palomalu, who Hufanga has spoken with and conversed with to try to improve his own craft with San Francisco, learning, learning from a Hall of Fame safety with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they do have those similar elements to their game where they're instinctual players, gritty guys, glue guys who are very versatile, and because they're such smart football players, they can be put in different positions to succeed. He did have that Baker cyst in the same knee in the preseason. And look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to act like I'm a doctor. Go to Pro Football Doc on Twitter if you want that analysis. But as an analyst of the game of football and in covering San Francisco 49ers news, that Baker cyst was in the same knee. And from everything that I've read about that injury, that can lead to other injuries. MCL, meniscus, ACL, here for Talano Hufonga. Again, not sure, just speculating that maybe that injury weakened the knee to a certain degree where when Rashada White kind of crossed him up a little bit, Hufonga went one way, tried to plant that leg, the knee just gave out a little bit. The good news is from Kyle Shanahan is that this is a clean tear in the ACL. There's not other ligaments in that knee that... um are also torn. Now, with that Baker cyst, he did get it drained instead of operated on during the preseason, and you can go one of two ways with that. You can get surgery and be out for a little while, probably not a season ender, or you can try to manage it by draining that cyst. Hufonga, he kind of sided with the latter, draining that cyst. So we'll continue to obviously monitor that situation. Maybe some doctors will talk about that. But I thought that was somewhat interesting within this process when I sat back, bird's eye view, macro level, and thought about the injury to Talano Hufanga. His pro football focus numbers this year, very good. You know, last year he got very aggressive and sometimes overly aggressive in pursuing plays in the pass game. And teams sometimes took advantage of that. They would fake him out a little bit, he'd get turned around, or he'd over-pursue. That would lead to a big play downfield. But for the fifth-round pick, 181 selection overall in the draft in 2021, he has steadily improved every single year that he's been in the NFL. And this year was having his best all-around season, despite probably having that knee element a little bit. 70-and-a-half overall pro football focus grade. We know he's great against the run because you can stick him in the box, and he'll put his 
hat down, and he'll lay a hit. 77.1 grade there. Pass rush grade of 76.3. How often when Steve Wilkes or D'Amico Ryans did decide to dial up a blitz, did you see Hufanga lining up from that kind of corner safety blitz area and getting a hit on the quarterback or at least altering the throw or the read from the quarterback? And then against the run, making really good tackles as a box safety for some TFLs and minimal gains. Coverage grade of 66.3. He's certainly grown there, I think, and that was part of the improvements that I was talking about. 43 solo tackles this year, three picks, 16 targets, 13 sep- uh, receptions allowed, only allowing a passer rating of 72.9. 15 stops as well. That's when you make an impactful play right around the line of scrimmage. And that came on 384 coverage snaps and 178 run defense snaps. As for who steps in for who fawn guts, unfortunate for him too, by the way, I want to make note of this one more year on his contract. He's eligible for an extension this off season. So the timing of this is pretty rough because San Francisco is probably going to delay those contract extension talks until they can see he's either healthy in the lead up to the year, which is risky, or he plays out the remainder of that contract. And if he shows no signs of slowing down or being impacted or negated by that knee injury, maybe then they give him a contract extension. But for him, you know, he's not going to potentially get that early money that he probably thought was coming a little bit earlier. The good news here, again, a couple of positive spins on the show today, only 23 years old, and nowadays often players uh, can return full strength with somewhat regularity as far as their level of play goes after undergoing an ACL surgery. Today's show, by the way, is presented by PrizePix. PrizePix.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Have to give them a shout out. If you're into playing Daily Fantasy Sports, this is Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. Yesterday during the watch party, I passed along the picks that I made. I had Brock Purdy, more than 258.5 passing yards. Debo Samuel, more than 48.5 receiving yards. And a cool spin with prize picks. You can combine other sports for the last element of your selection, for instance, I had Sidney Crosby and Kevin Durant shots on goal and three pointers made at more than five and a half. Sidney Crosby in a win for the Pittsburgh Penguins, four shots on goal, and Kevin Durant had a couple of three pointers made. So I was able to win $25 off of $5 with prize picks. Again, $100 deposit match, prizepicks.com slash CLNS code. CLNS. You could tell me, you can cash in, and you can get some real money winning it via DFS on prize picks. All right, Jair Brown, he is going to replace Talano Hufanga. And what a story yesterday. The rookie hadn't played much in the lead up to this game against the Buccaneers in week 11. Third round pick, had a good rookie mini camp, flashed a little bit throughout training camp, didn't do a ton in preseason, but a third round pick who worked hard, was patient, got his opportunity, and yesterday he shined. He made impactful play after impactful play yesterday to really help close that game out against the Buccaneers. He had the pass breakup in the end zone on Mike Evans. He had the interception, making a couple of other plays across the field after he got turned around on a big play from Tampa Bay that got them closer to the goal line, if I'm not mistaken, He made that one mistake where he did get turned around. He got out of position. Oh, shoot. This is the NFL. Guys are a little bit faster and explosive. Receiver got behind him. He made some incredible, incredible plays down the stretch. And I really liked him coming out of Penn State. You know, I'm from Pennsylvania. My last job, actually, I worked for a local news station, WNEP in Scranton, one of the most viewed local news stations in the country covering you know, I think 22 counties across Pennsylvania. As part of my role there covering news and sports, I did cover Penn State football, and I've grown up watching that program, being from Pennsylvania. And what I'll say about Penn State, I know that James Franklin has never beaten top five, top 10 teams. I hate how he manages the game. I think that he's a consistent winner, but lacks some of the game management skills to beat an Ohio State and Michigan, which has been the biggest problem with Penn State, but he recruits the hell out of players. They get three, four, five-star guys, and they develop them into pros as good as any program really across the country, especially in the Big Ten. Talent-wise, when you look at Penn State, physicality, speed, athleticism, they have some of the athletes, 
especially in the trenches, sometimes at the skill positions, Chris Godwin, um, Allen Robinson, you know, just a couple of receivers, Saquon Barkley, Miles Sanders, just a couple of players at skill positions on top of great linebackers, great defensive linemen, good instinctual safeties and DBs who are impactful players at the NFL level. And I watch a lot of Jair Brown. I thought he brought a lot of the same elements to the Niners defense that Talano Hufanga did. Again, going back to him being an instinctual player. And the Niners like the target DBs who have those quality instincts, right? They can dissect and diagnose plays. They can read them before they happen. They have good instincts. They have a good feel for the game. They make plays on the football and have ball skills, which is really difficult to do. Jair Brown, good interception off a deflection yesterday in the end zone. And the Niners like to target DBs who have those instincts. You know, you look at Samuel Womack, Darrell Luter Jr., Diamador Lenore is third in the NFL with more than 300 snaps without giving up a touchdown this year. They make plays on the ball. Jair Brown can do that as well. He was one of the top graded defensive players against Tampa Bay too. Fred Warner, happy birthday to all pro Fred number 54. Yesterday showed once again why he's the best off-ball linebacker in the NFL. A hell of a performance from him. He was all across the field. I mean, this dude loves ball, knows ball, and is a game wrecker and a game changer. Fred Warner, 83.9 grade. Eric Armstead, 83.6. A sack or at least a half sack in three consecutive games for him after going over during that losing streak and up to that point as the Niners were 5-3. and three. Deshaun Gibson, I thought he was really good in the back end. You lose Hufanga, you still have Gibson, who's been playing a really good ball on a bargain deal for this team the last two years. 80.1 grade. Nick Bosa, couple of pressures on Baker Mayfield. Sack was a part of that forced fumble with Fred Warner, 78.6 grade. Diamador Lenore, 77.2. And Jair Brown, a 76.8 pro football focus grade. So he's going to step in for Hufanga. I think he's capable. Obviously, when you have a rookie on the back end and you're going up against some quality teams down the stretch, you know, Seattle, two times in three weeks starting on Thursday. Philadelphia Eagles there as well. Um, you know, he might make some mistakes, but Niners have some confidence in him. I have some confidence in him that he can be a good player. Pedigree, obviously, as a former third-round pick. All right, Niners analysis still to come a little bit later. Got to talk about the performance from Brock Purdy. So just subscribe, turn on your notifications. Therefore, whenever we push out a video or go live, you'll be notified. And thanks for tuning in.